Hey, what up guys, welcome back to my blockchain channel and today we're going to discuss the contents of a block in the Bitcoin blockchain. I think that the block is very interesting, is a very interesting concept because the block gives the blockchain its properties, it's the basic element of a blockchain and therefore I think it's important to understand what a block uh, consists of. And also guys, you have been requesting Ripple for a couple of days now and the video about Ripple is coming, so stay tuned, we will talk about Ripple in a couple of days. I promise you that. But today we'll discuss uh, the contents of a block. So let's get into it. These are the basic uh, parts of a block. First of all, we have the magic number. The magic number is four bytes long and it's an arbitrary number that signals that this is a Bitcoin block. So in software development, we have this notion of magic numbers and different system and dif different softwares use this number to identify themselves. And so Bitcoin, a Bitcoin client identifies itself as a Bitcoin client by using this magic number so that other systems and other software, uh, software programs know that this is a a Bitcoin block and that is why we have the magic number and it's just an arbitrary number and it is the same for all blocks because all the blocks identify themselves as a uh, Bitcoin block it, it's it's kind of like gender I, I identify myself as a man and all other men the majority of all other men uh, identify themselves as men uh, not to get uh, uh, political or <laughs> controversial here. So magic number is um, is a number that identifies what kind of software is is this. And so it's the same for all for all Bitcoin blocks. Next we have the block size, which is also four bytes. And the block size tells us how how long this block is with all of the transactions. Next we have the block header which is 80 bytes. And uh, the block header is the most interesting part, in my opinion. And we will talk about the contents of the block header on the next page. That is why we have this arrow. Uh, next one is transaction counter, which is an integer that tells us how many transactions this block has. And next we have a list of transactions, which um, simply contains all of the transactions that are in this block. And we have... So if transaction counter is 10, then we'll have 10 transactions. If the transaction counter is 5, we'll have 5 transactions. And if the transaction counter is from 1 to 9 bytes, and block header is 80 bytes, block size is 4 bytes, and magic number is 4 bytes as well. So these are the basic parts, guys. Now we'll talk more about the header. So let's go ahead and look at what the header consists of. Here we have the header. The header has a version which simply tells us what version we are on currently. So, for example, the current version of Bitcoin blocks is 2. And so if a for some reason, if a block with version 1 comes, it will be ignored because the current version is 2. And if in the future we would add more fields and more data to this Bitcoin block structure, we would need to update this version to a new version because now the format of a block would look different. So this really identifies the format of blocks because in the future we might have blocks that look completely different. Maybe we have, we'll find some new way of um, of building a blockchain where the blocks look very different from from this structure we have today and then we'll have to change this version uh, number to something else and the version is four bytes next we have 32 bytes of hash of the previous block uh, header so this is the header and we can hash all of this information at once and we get some hash and so this hash previous block is the hash of the header from the previous block so we take everything here we hash it and we have it as a field hash prev block in the next block 
so hash previous block is a hash of the header from the previous block. It's 32 bytes. Next we have hash of the Merkle root, which is also 32 bytes. And we discussed Merkle trees in my video about blockchain. So I link it in the description. You can go ahead and watch it. And so in blockchain technology, we have this concept of Merkle trees. And a Merkle tree is a data structure where each where each level of the tree is a hash of the previous level. Uh, you, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at Merkle trees on Google, or you can watch my video on, on blockchain. And so hash Merkle root is the root hash of such a Merkle tree consisting, guys, consisting of the transactions in, in this block. So we take these transactions, we put them in a Merkle tree in Merkle tree and we take the root uh, value and so we put it in the header as hash Mer Merkle root. Next we have the time which is the current time, time stamp. It is four bytes. Next four bytes is the target and uh, I think this is a very interesting variable because this uh, tells us the difficulty of this current block. And to understand how this works, how the target works, we need to under understand how nonce works. So when we mine a block, when a miner mines a block, what does uh, the miner actually do? What the miner does is he takes or she, uh, so they take this hash Merkle root, they append a nonce, which they guess, they start from zero, and so they say, okay, nonce is equal to zero, I'll guess that nonce is equal to zero, I'll append it to hash Merkle root like this, I'll take the hash, I'll get a number from that hash, and I compare it to target. If, guys, if my, my hash that I received here from appending nonce to hash Merkle root, if this hash is less than target, I am done and I have solved the puzzle and I get the mining reward. However, if it's more, uh, if it's higher than the target, I have to increase the nonce. So I, I increase it from zero to one. I append one here to hash Merkle root and, uh, and I append one. I'll calculate the hash once again. This hash will be completely different from the last one. I'll compare it to, I'll, and then I'll co I compare it to target. And I see, is my new hash less than target? If it's less than target, I'm done. Congratulations, and I'll get my reward. However, if it's uh, higher than target, I'll need to increase this to two and do the same thing. So guys, as you understand, the, the lower the target, the, dif the more difficult is it to find a hash that is lower than this target. One second, guys. So the Bitcoin network automatically adjusts this target uh, so that each, uh, each 10 minutes we get a new block. So if the Bitcoin network notices that it takes five minutes for the blockchain to mine a new block, it will decrease the target until it takes 10 minutes. And if for some reason it takes one hour to produce a new block, it will decrease this um, target. Uh, so now we, we've talked about version, hash previous block, hash Merkle root, time, target, and nonce. So nonce is basically the solution to this um, puzzle. So when a miner has solved uh, this um, cryptographic puzzle, or, which is just guessing the nonce, up, uh, appending it to the Merkle, uh, the hash of the Merkle root, uh, hash Merkle root, which is basically like the the element on top of the Merkle tree. Uh, and if this hash is lower than bit, uh, the target, then the miner is done and he'll get the reward. However, if it's higher, uh, the miner needs to increment this, do the append it, calculate the hash, compare to target. If it's lower, he, he won. If it's not lower, he needs to increment this. So th this is what, what we mean when we say cryptographic puzzle. It's not really a puzzle. It's, it's a guessing game where you just start from zero here, you append it, hash, compare. If it's less, you, you're done. If it's not, you take plus one and do the same thing. So as you can see, it's not a puzzle. It's a very dumb puzzle. Uh, you basically just guess. 
And so the first, the first uh, miner that uh, g gets um, the correct nonce and calculates at a hash that is less than the target will win, uh, will win the game and he'll get uh, the reward. So these are the parts of a block, guys. We have magic number, block size, block header, transaction counter, and transactions. And now I want to, I want to highlight the beauty of uh, of the blockchain and how it's visible in in the header because we have hash previous block here which is the hash of the previous uh, uh, previous uh, block header and guys if i wanted to mess with the with history if i changed something in the, maybe in a transaction from years ago as you can see this uh, this hash would be completely different because the previous block header contains the hash uh, the, the hash Merkle root which is the top value in its uh, uh, in its uh, Merkle tree of transactions and so if I change a transaction in the previous block this hash Merkle root would be completely different in the previous block meaning that hash previous block in this block would be completely different uh, so let's repeat that. If I change a transaction in the previous block, previous block would have a completely different hash Merkle, Merkle root, which in turns would give me in the new block completely different hash previous block. And uh, other, other nodes will notice that uh, very quickly, that the hashes are wrong. And so these two variables really really uh, give the blockchain the property that you cannot uh, alter old values and you cannot mess with the history uh, and that is why i think this is so fascinating you have hash previous block and hash merkle root this represents the contents of the pre of the current block because this is the hash of all transactions basically and this represents the hash of the previous block and so if you would change a single bit in any of the transactions in the current block or in any of the transactions in the uh, previous block, this, this would be completely different. And if you change something in the current block, this would be completely different. And in turn, the next block, when we hash this, the next block would have a totally completely different hash previous block. And so this is why we can't really mess with the history when it comes to blockchains, guys. So that's it guys, I, I'm really curious about your opinion. This uh, this video was a bit technical. I mean, we had um, bytes and we had different fields. Did you like this or was it too technical? Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, and, and yeah, p please give me feedback on my presentation. Did you understand this? It would be really interesting to hear. Uh, and if you are a new viewer and you like technology, you like blockchain, you like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you should definitely, guys, you should definitely subscribe because I myself am a software developer and I post videos every single day and you will find them interesting. So that is why you should subscribe, guys. So today we discussed the contents of a block and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Also, <laughs> Also, the 